For the boundary points, we're going to use a different option to create the point numbers. We'll then generate the labels for the point IDs and then filter out any duplicate labels. So we can now turn off all of our data that we've got on the screen. We won't be needing that. And we'll turn on the model DWG boundary. As a quick check of our boundaries, it's sometimes good to annotate them with the bearings and distances. We can then compare these bearings and distances to any plan plots that we may have. So to do this, up under the set out toolbar, we have a option here called annotate strings, which opens up the bearing and distance label panel. If you go into the parameter file, under our user library, we should have a detail.lbf file. If you then read that in, it'll preset all of our textile for our bearings and our distances. We're going to label, we can either label everything on this view or we can just select the model. And if you middle mouse button in there and pick any string, it'll fill it in for you. And we want to label all segments. We can then click on process and turn on the model TXT bearing and TXT distance. We can then finish on this panel. Now you may notice that the text looks rather large and the reason for this is because the plot scale of this plan view is still set to 1 is to 1000. So if we change it from 1 is to 1000 to match the plot scale that we had previously been using we should see this text shrink. So down in the bottom right hand corner we have a, an option here to set the plan plot scale and we can change it from 1 is to 1000 to 1 is to 500 and click on set. And that makes the text a lot easier to read. You can then compare that to any plan plots that you may have. Next we're going to create the point IDs for the boundaries. So we don't need these annotations anymore, we can just turn them off. Because we've already created some set out points, we don't know what the next available point number is. So we have an option inside of our toolbars to check the next available point number. And that can be found under the measure toolbar up here and it's the show next available point number. And in this case, it's point number 33. We can then click on OK. The next option we're going to run will be to create the point IDs. And this is doing it slightly different than we had done previously. We can just click on the icon there. We're going to create a point ID for the model. Once again, if we middle mouse button and then select it, DWG 1308.28 boundary. And our action will be to set our first point number we know is 33 because we checked it previously. We could click on replace any existing vertex IDs, but there is none anyway, so it makes no difference. And our target, we're just going to overwrite the existing data and click on change. If we now toggle on those point IDs. You can see that we have point IDs, but in most of the corners, you can see we have duplicates. And this is caused by the fact that this string here stops here starts here, so there'll be another one there, and then the same over here, we've got a point ID at that point along this string, and also where it intersects it along this string. Next option we're going to use is to actually create the labels, and we do this under the plotting toolbar. We have an option here called use label map file. The model is the model of our boundaries, and you can just middle mouse button and select that. The label map file we're going to use is inside our user library and is called label point numbers. We want to make sure that this use model for labels is ticked on because we want it all to go into one model and that model will be called txt bdy space ptno. And once again, if we put a comma and a one or the plan view number after the model name, then it will automatically turn it on. We can then click on label to create our labels. We then just zoom in. You'll notice that our point numbers are labeled.